You've just been assigned a research paper by your professor and you're ready to get going, but where do you start? Most likely you've considered Google to begin your research, and that's great. However, it is important to keep in mind that there are limitations to Google and it should not be your only discovery and access tool. There are a number of frustrations that can occur when using Google, such as being overwhelmed by the number of results, the time-consuming and difficult process of sorting through results, the lack of clarity on where sources originate from, the limited amount of tools to sort information, and paywalls. There are also a number of benefits of using Google. It is useful for up-to-date news. It is a good tool for an introduction to a subject. It has powerful advanced search options if used correctly, and it is free. After watching this video, you will be able to recognize the limits of a Google search and think critically about the search process and the search results you get. Let's assume your research paper is focused on gun manufacturers. There are a number of questions that might be pertinent to your research. How many people are employed in the gun industry? What are the leading companies manufacturing guns? What is the annual revenue for the gun industry? What role does the NRA play in the gun industry? How many guns are sold each year? If you and a friend do the same search in Google, you may be surprised to find out the results can be very different. There are a number of factors that affect the results you get, including your search and internet activity history, as well as Google's PageRank algorithm. This is what is known as a filter bubble. Filter bubbles are the result of your search history where an algorithm guesses what information you want to see based on your past searches, among other factors. For example, here are the search results from two different computers using two different search and browsing histories for the query firearms industry. Everything you do online influences your results. Keeping in mind that the results returned by Google are not uniform is important when beginning the research process. Additionally, many students and users as a whole do not look beyond the first page of Google's results. This is problematic not only because it limits sources researchers see to a small number, but also because a combination of factors unnaturally shape the results users see, including Google's algorithm, which determines a site's relevance as a result, search engine optimization techniques, and marketing techniques used to increase the site's Google page ranking. With that in mind, it is important to remember the results provided by Google are not omniscient. Instead, it is useful to think about the research results Google returns as an algorithmic guess. It is up to the researcher to understand the subjective nature of Google's searches and finesse the results into something manageable and relevant to their project. Oftentimes, students can get frustrated with Google's results because there are so many results which vary wildly that they cannot tell which results are useful for their project. There are, however, ways to improve and narrow down the search results Google returns. You may consider using quotation marks to search for exact phrases. You might search within a specific site or you may consider using the variety of advanced search tools provided by Google. Whatever tactic you choose, creating more manageable results is important in saving you both time and frustration. Using Google in a more deliberate way to find specific content is a good start. And remember, while Google is a great place to begin the research process, it should not be the only database you use. If you have any further questions, click the Ask a Librarian button on the library's homepage for help.